Welcome back to Echo Ridge and another episode here in our Ultimate Beginner's Guide. Fun fact, I just recorded this entire episode and realized I wasn't actually recording. So this one's going to have a lot of buildings that are already created, and I'm sorry. But trust me, this is worse for me than it is for you, because I'm doing this now twice. In our colony, we've been sort of putting something off for a little while, and that is the creation of an oxygen machine. But it's not because we didn't want to build it, it's because we didn't need to build it. We didn't need to build it because we're sitting at 20 tons of algae. And if we really wanted to, we could get a lot more algae from around this map. So this beginning point is very important. The oxygen diffuser could provide 100% of your oxygen needs for your colony. The problem becomes finding an infinite source, or at least a long enough for you to be playing your colony source of algae. Because without algae, your oxygen diffusers are not going to run, and your duplicates aren't going to be getting oxygen. Now, in the past several months, there's been an update that adds meteors to even the spaced out colonies, and one of those meteors that you can find in your planetoid description over on the star map is a slime meteor. Now, this planetoid doesn't have any meteor showers forecasted, but if you were to get slime meteors constantly hitting your planetoid, you can then turn all that slime into algae using the algae distiller. Take 600 grams worth of slime, requires 120 watts worth of power, but on the other side, you're given 200 grams per second worth of algae. But notice that you're also gonna be given 400 grams per second worth of polluted water. And it's like this with a lot of buildings. For instance, even in our power generators, such as the natural gas generator and the petroleum generator, they both output polluted water. Your sludge press takes mud and outputs water on the other side. And I say all that to remind you that water is a much more sustainable material than a lot of other things in oxygen not included. I mean, just to the north of our colony here, we have a salt water source in the form of a cool salt slush geyser over here. And then we also have a cool slush geyser that outputs a bunch of polluted water. We can also take all this ice and turn it into water. It's for that reason that people typically turn to the electrolyzer because it takes one kilo of water per second and 120 watts and gives you 880 grams per second worth of oxygen. And what a lot of players end up doing is just take an electrolyzer, putting it where there's some power, plugging in some fresh clean water, and it will start producing oxygen. Unfortunately, it'll also start producing hydrogen. And duplicants, well, they don't like hydrogen. For instance, if I trap Catalina here in some hydrogen, you can see that they're gonna get eye irritation. And if they stay in it long enough, they'll get a major eye irritation, which is definitely not what we want for Catalina and all of her dupe friends. But there's nothing to say that you can't run electrolyzer like this pretty much forever, but there's a better way to do it. Before we get to that, I also wanted to update you on our Paku here. And in the previous unrecorded video, I went through this whole system and built it up for you and it was great and wonderful and all that was good in the world. And then I discovered that I wasn't recording. So here we are. We have a lot of Paku in this tank. And the reason being is because the tank is built on the same level as our printing pod. So whenever I see Paku in the pod, I print them out and then they hip and hop and bring themselves all the way over here and splash down into their giant aquarium. And considering Paku only lived to be 25 cycles old, they eventually die. And when they do die, they turn into Paku filet. And we like Paku filet because we can turn that into cooked seafood. And that's a good quality food and it gives the duplicants an aquatic diet, which helps fend off radiation a little bit. The problem is the duplicants couldn't get any of the Paku that would land on the bottom of the aquarium. Because remember, we put this door here and we set the permissions to which the duplicants couldn't pass through it so they couldn't go grab all this polluted dirt. That way we could use this automatic dispenser and drop all the polluted dirt we wanted to down here. Now, there was a couple of ways to fixing this. One, I could have put the polluted dirt way down here and put another door here, or I could have used this as an example of what an auto sweeper is capable of. And that's what I chose to do. Auto sweepers are down here in the shipping menu. They require a little bit of refined metal, and they require a mechatronics engineer to build. And in our colony, Bubbles is the dupe of all dupes, and since they had an interest in improved carry, I figured we'd make them our mechatronics engineer. 
Now, ideally, a duplicate would have an interest in operating and supplying in order to make them your mechatronics engineer. And by that, I just mean this last skill at the end of this tree. But once you have a duplicate that does that, you can build things like the auto sweeper. The best mechatronics engineers have interest in supplying, operating, and building. Because most of your mechatronics engineer tasks require some sort of construction. In this case, we put a refrigerator down here. So anytime a Paku filet drops, the auto sweeper is going to be able to grab it and put it inside the refrigerator. And remember, the duplicates can't get that errand because they can't go through the door. But we also have this refrigerator set on a priority of one. That way, the duplicates will still come and get the Paku filets from this refrigerator and put them inside the electric grill that is set on a priority of five. That way, Ari here can turn all that Paku filet into cooked seafood. We could do the same thing with the polluted dirt and all the other materials here. And we'll do it just as an example. I'll select polluted dirt here. And the auto sweepers are going to go pick it all up. And because this storage bin is set on a priority of one, a duplicate is going to come grab all this polluted dirt and drop it right here into this automatic dispenser. That, of course, would create an infinite loop that we don't necessarily want, so we'll uncheck polluted dirt from it. But right now, though, this storage bin is looking for eggshells because now's about the time in the game that you want to start worrying about lime. And you'll also have a lot of eggshells laying around because, well, you're ranching a lot more critters and they're laying a lot more eggs. We're going to take all those eggshells and bring them to the rock crusher where we'll then crush them and turn it into lime. The reason why you want to start doing this now is because lime is a critical resource into a late game material that you may have already heard of called steel. And we're going to use steel a little bit later, but in the meantime, it's probably a good idea to start crushing all those eggshells. But the auto sweeper was a great opportunity to highlight the fact that duplicates don't have to do everything for you. In some cases, a well-placed auto sweeper can save you a lot of duplicate labor. Now for the meat and potatoes of this episode, and that is our oxygen machine. Now, full disclaimer, I have an entire tutorial that goes way in depth with oxygen machines to include some of the popular ones in the community, such as the SPOM or self-powered oxygen machine. Now, truth be told, this is not a perfect system and it's not meant to be. It's meant to be an example of what you can set up pretty quickly in order to get your duplicates breathing oxygen out of electrolyzers instead of staying reliant on oxygen diffusers and algae. We started with a little house here with a nice little front door. That way all the oxygen in here doesn't mix with the environment out here. And eventually, once we're confident that the system is up and working, we'll actually remove this manual airlock and put insulated tiles into its place. And we needed to research the insulated tiles for this build for a specific reason. The electrolyzers and all the gas pumps and systems in here create a lot of heat. As you can see by using the temperature overlay, there's already more heat than we're comfortable with. So in order to keep this sort of contained and away from our mealwood crops and our thimble reeds that the heat would end up causing them to stifle, we put systems like this in little boxes. In this case, I decided to make it look like a little house because little houses are cute. Well, that and the fact we're taking advantage of one of the elements of hydrogen and oxygen. Remember when we had that open air electrolyzer system and it was outputting a bunch of hydrogen? Well, when we look around, you can see that a lot of the hydrogen has ended up at the top of our base. In fact, it keeps traveling up until it can't travel up anymore. In this case here, it just got stuck in this pocket and since it can't go up any further, it'll just sit there. And for the hydrogen that found the ladder well, it made it all the way up to this point. So as the electrolyzers in here create oxygen and hydrogen, we expect the hydrogen to rise up. When it does, it's going to be captured by this gas pump right here. This gas pump is capturing nothing but oxygen. And for that reason, we have a gas pipe coming out and we have it connected with a giant gas pipe where it's connected to three gas vents, which are providing oxygen for our entire colony. But if we take a better look at this, notice that that oxygen is 55 degrees. That's not good. Because remember, for instance, the millwood only likes it up to 30 degrees. So you need to be hypersensitive to where your agriculture is and what kind of temps they're seeing, because they will stifle and you will lose your food source. So for that reason, we are taking all the oxygen coming out of here 
and sending it through our water tank. Because water has such a higher mass, in other words, this one tile has over a thousand kilos worth of water, yet one tile of oxygen is only 2,000 grams, or two kilos worth of mass. So the water is able to cool down that oxygen pretty quickly. But don't kid yourself, this solution will not last forever unless you are bringing in colder water to replace this water. Which, spoiler alert, we will in a future episode. So I know that we have enough thermal capacity in this water tank to keep that oxygen cool. For instance, you can see the oxygen is coming in the tank at around 50 degrees, but it's leaving it 24. And the reason why it's leaving it at 24 is because, well, the tank is 24 degrees. We've helped this process a little bit by not just using regular gas pipes, but by using radiant gas pipes. Radiant gas pipes, just like the radiant liquid pipes, have a higher thermal conductivity than their standard regular gas pipe cousins. Now, because this is not a perfect system and it doesn't have any sort of equilibrium, a lot of what this gas pipe grabs is oxygen. So if we ever want to do something with all the hydrogen, we need to use a filter. In this case, we're using a regular old standard gas filter. It requires 120 watts. And when you select the gas filter, you're allowed to select any element. In this case, we select hydrogen. So we're looking at the ventilation overlay. We can see that this is the input to the gas filter. This is the filter itself. So anything that we had selected is going to go down this way. And then everything else is going to come out of here. And then all that hydrogen is going to follow this line here and go into a hydrogen generator. The hydrogen generator is similar to your coal generator. They just produce power. Whereas our coal generators produce 600 watts whenever you give them coal and incidentally create a lot of carbon dioxide in the process. The hydrogen generator is a lot cleaner. It just takes in hydrogen, burns it off and gives you 800 watts worth of power. But it's not the only thing that it produces because it also produces 4,000 DTUs worth of heat. Now in this specific system, we have a smart battery here that's set on 9060. So whenever this battery is less than 60% full, the hydrogen generator is going to turn on. If it doesn't have any hydrogen and the battery gets down to 50%, the manual generator turns on and gets the battery up to charge so that the whole system starts running again. This hydrogen generator down here, you don't have to worry too much about, but it was an important lesson. Because if you ever happen upon a design that is actually power positive, you're going to create a lot more hydrogen than what you need. In this case, this gas filter doesn't really give us the opportunity to make this a power positive process. So this overflow system here is not going to get much use. But to unpack this, let me deconstruct some pipes. If hydrogen were to back up into these pipes because the hydrogen generator couldn't use it fast enough, it would end up sitting in this tile here. Well, when inputs get backed up, like we learned with the liquid inputs, the gas would bypass this input right here. And when it does, we can then have another bridge that sends it somewhere else. In this case, we're sending all that excess hydrogen off to another hydrogen generator. And just to make sure we wouldn't be wasting all the power that it would generate, we have this connected to our main power line, which is an important point. This whole oxygen machine system is on its own grid. And what I mean by that is this power line is not connected to our main colony's power line anywhere. And quite frankly, we couldn't because our main colony line is awfully close to 1000 watts already. And this system has a potential load of 840 watts. So we need to keep them separated. A couple of other details that we've used in this system is we don't want this gas pump to run 100% of the time. For instance, we want a little bit of the hydrogen to at least back up. So that way this filter doesn't have to filter out too much 100% of the time. So by putting an Atmo sensor and plugging it into the gas pump, we can dictate when that gas pump is going to turn off and when it's going to turn on. In this case, we have it set to whenever there is more than 1500 grams worth of atmosphere in this tile right here, the gas pump will turn on. This Atmo sensor down here is doing something similar although it's set pretty aggressively at anything above 400 grams. We don't want it to pull no matter what, because if we did, it would end up yoinking some of this hydrogen down. So we make sure there's sufficient enough pressure in here to allow the hydrogen to rise up in the system. 
Now to underscore and be clear once again, this is not a highly efficient system. We only used it to highlight some of the basics of how you can just put a couple of electrolyzers in the room and press go and you're off to the races providing oxygen for your duplicates. Now this system as it stands is not sufficient to be able to provide oxygen for all of our duplicates. As you know, we have seven duplicates in this colony. One single gas pump can only draw out 500 grams per second. Or another way to put that is five duplicates worth of oxygen per second. So what we actually need is another gas pump. And there's a couple of ways to deal with that. One, we could just put another gas pump down here and extend our little house. You could also design a system that was a little bit wider and put the gas pumps down here and that would work. We could also just have this gas pump work a lot more so that it was gobbling up hydrogen and oxygen. And since we're filtering out the oxygen, it wouldn't matter much anyways. In this case, we're gonna use the double gas pump method and we're gonna move around the electrolyzers a little bit. We could have gotten away with one electrolyzer considering that each electrolyzer provides enough oxygen when it's running full out for 8.88 duplicates even though this one single gas pump can only provide enough oxygen for five duplicates. With our electrolyzers out of the way, I'm gonna put a couple of mesh tiles here and here, and then throw the electrolyzers up one level. And now when we deconstruct these insulated tiles, you're gonna see that we have enough room for three gas pumps, which would be able to draw out three times 500 grams per second or 1500 grams worth of oxygen per second, which is much closer to the maximum output of the electrolyzer itself. And now with three gas pumps, we're gonna be able to move a lot more of that oxygen around. In fact, you can now see that there's one kilo worth of oxygen in each of these pipes, which would be enough to provide oxygen for 10 duplicates. We can get this even a little bit better by separating these gas pipelines here and bringing this oxygen line down through the water tank as well. Maybe we filtered around just like we did with the top one, easy peasy, and then it could provide oxygen for the bottom part of our base. Or if we ever start using oxygen masks or suits, this would be a perfect line to supply oxygen to them. But now it seems we've introduced another problem into this system. And some of you may have caught it with an addition of another gas pump. Gas pumps are thirsty boys when it comes to power at 240 watts each. So you can see that we're hitting above our current load on occasion because the regular wire can only hold 1,000 watts. Wouldn't it be nice if there was a bigger type of wire that could hold more than 1,000 watts? Well, there is, and it's found in low resistance conductors, and it's called conductive wire. Conductive wire will be able to get us all the way up to 2,000 watts. All we're gonna need is to make sure that we have enough copper or gold because conductive wire, unlike regular wire, requires refined metals not just a metal ore. Speaking of gold versus copper, we built all the machines in here out of gold amalgam. And there is a very specific reason why. Remember all that heat we knew we were gonna be generating in here? Well, when you build things out of gold or gold amalgam, you're given an overheat temperature of plus 50. When you combine that with the standard overheat temperature, for instance, in this case of the gas pump of 75 degrees, your gold amalgam gas pump will have a total overheat temperature of 125 degrees. So it does not matter if it gets a little hotter in here. Otherwise, if you would have used regular copper ore, such as was the case with our sink, it has an overheat temperature of 75, which means if this area became hotter than 75 degrees, this sink would overheat and duplicates would have to repair it, wasting more materials. If you're looking for gold and gold amalgam, check your slime biomes because that is normally where you're gonna find it. And with that research complete, we can now just take the conductive wire and go right over the existing wire and the duplicates will come upgrade it nice and easy. And just like that, our oxygen machine grid is fully upgraded and you can see the current load has a maximum of 2000 watts. And once you're sure that nothing else is gonna break or you're not gonna have to get back in there, you can get rid of your manual airlock and fill it all in with insulated tiles. And there we have it, our fully functioning not as efficient as Echo would like, Oxygen Machine. Don't know what that acronym is, but I'm sure it doesn't make sense. I know this episode was a bit of a hodgepodge because of the whole re-recording thing, but I hope you still were able to find some value out of it. I especially hope that you're more confident with using the electrolyzer, realizing you can just throw a couple of them into a nice cute little house and get going that way, upgraded as you need, 
so at the minimum you're able to enjoy your colony a little bit longer without running out of oxygen. Do me a favor, if you like this episode and want to see more out of the series, hit that like button and that way YouTube will continue to recommend it to new and existing oxygen not included players like yourselves. In the next coming episodes, I think we're going to be ready for some Atmos suits and possibly some beginning industry. So until next time, happy gaming, and I'll talk to you soon.